Can I tell you a secret? You are seven times more likely to fail a coding interview if you don't understand what I am about to share. Over the last 13 years, I went through dozens of coding interviews and secured jobs that made me over one million dollars. And over that time, I found three mistakes that will ruin any job interview. So in this video, I will show you what those three mistakes are and how you can avoid them to nail any tech interview. To start, let me show you the mistake number one. Imagine you're at the restaurant and the menu is entirely written in Japanese. Unfortunately, the English menu isn't available and you don't have Wi-Fi to translate it. Would you dare to select a random meal just by knowing its price? Most of people wouldn't risk it because nobody wants to eat something they hate. But at the very same time, software engineers are doing it all the time. And I don't mean ordering meals blindly, but making decisions that have long-term consequences like applying to jobs. Many software engineers, when they job hunt, they don't care about the company unless it is Google. Too often it's all about their personal goals, like landing a remote job or getting a six-figure salary. Don't get me wrong, your personal goals are extremely important, but you will not get your perfect job by a pure luck. First, you need to prove that you are the best candidates and make hiring you a no-brainer. Surprisingly, it isn't as hard as you might think because nobody is doing it. So how you can do that? To start, you need to take time to learn about the company and about their products. Write down the most important aspects of their business and find overlapping experiences in your career. Of course, don't forget about reading the job description carefully. It will help you to understand who is their ideal candidate. The goal of this exercise is to find out if you have experience that can level up their business. The rule of thumb is that you should match about 70% of listed job criteria in the job description. And if you do so, then congratulations, you are their perfect match. Now it's due time to stand in the spotlight. First, you need to tailor your resume for this job opening. So how you do that? Focus on the most important section, which is your work experience. The recruiters will take only a few seconds to go through your resume and they will be looking for relevant keywords only. You should help them to find them. The easiest way to find what those keywords are is pasting the job description and brief information of the company into AI and simply ask it, what keywords do I need to mention in my resume to show that I have relevant experience for this position. Then you take those keywords and try to include them in your work experience. And remember, never lie and never ask AI to write it for you because you will get rejected. Every software engineer is using AI these days and they use it also to tailor their resumes for job descriptions. Unfortunately, AI isn't as creative as it seems. Basically, it always generates similar responses for similar prompts. And that's why recruiters will immediately spot that your resume has similar content to 300 other candidates and they will reject you immediately. And I'm not exaggerating here. About 90% of candidates are getting rejected because of AI-generated job applications. So don't do this. You need to remember that at this stage, recruiters want to reduce their workload and they will take only a few seconds to decide if they want to contact you. Even if the company claims they are pro-AI, it doesn't mean they like AI-generated job applications. So do your homework and write your resume on your own. It's tedious, but it is an amazing opportunity to stand out because it puts you in the top 10% of candidates. And remember, don't forget to check the company on Glassdoor. Glassdoor is a website where employees and job applicants review companies. You can use it to take a sneak peek into company's culture and find out if there are any problems you need to know about. Take it with a pinch of salt because negative reviews are usually written by employees who are laid off or job applicants who didn't pass the interview. That's right. On Glassdoor, you can read about the interview process at the company. This information is entirely filled by applicants and they say what were the hardest questions, what kind of interviews they had, and they even rate how difficult the interview was. Personally, I believe you should always check your future employers on Glassdoor because it will tell you how you're supposed to prepare for your job interview. In the end, you don't want to grind lead code for three months if you will end up getting a small coding task to do at home, right? There is one problem with Glassdoor though, it is an American website, so you will find there mostly American and international companies. From my experience, it works well in the Middle East, but it misses a lot of European companies. So if you are living in Europe, you need to look for a local alternative. For example, in Austria, Germany and Switzerland, you can use kunulu.com, which is basically a German equivalent of Glassdoor. So give it a try. Obviously, I wouldn't recommend using Glassdoor if you are applying to a big tech company like Google, because it's a waste of time. The hiring process is well known and well documented, so feel free to skip it. But this brings us to another mistake, mistake number two. 
Did you know that most software engineers applying to funk companies fail interviews due to poor communication rather than technical skills? There is a misconception that mastering lead code is the hardest part of landing a job at Google or any other tech giant, but the truth is that software engineers with excellent technical skills often fail interviews by the later stages. In the end, if you pass coding challenges, then Google knows that you aren't stupid, but they still need to evaluate your soft skills. And this is usually software engineers' worst nightmare, because most of us can express our thoughts clearly and explain technical problems in an easy to understand way. And unfortunately, you can only practice it with real people, but there is a light in the tunnel. Google and many other funk companies offer mock interviews to applicants who pass the lead code stage. A mock interview is a fake interview that is designed to help you to prepare before the real one. This is a job interview that you can safely wreck and you won't get rejected. I know it might sound a bit silly, but you should definitely take it if you can. It makes a real difference. Literally, it can increase your chances of passing interview by 100%. In the end, the only way to get better at job interviews is taking more interviews. That's why if you can't take a mock interview, then you should apply first to companies you don't care about that much to get some practice. You could start with consulting and outsourcing companies because if you wreck the job interview, then you aren't really missing out. Usually software engineers working at those companies have poor experience and they end up quitting after one year or two, so don't worry. Remember, ruining coding interview isn't a tragedy because you are getting better over time. And this brings us to another mistake, mistake number three. You will always fail coding interviews if you are using AI. Let me take you back in time to explain it. I was 14 when I started to learn programming. It was 2004 and I wanted to learn how to make interactive website in PHP 5 and MySQL. I bought the book and I was learning by reading it. Whenever I learned something new, I rewrote the code snippets into my editor to try it out. Back then, Europeans were using only two operating systems. Linux and Windows. Since I like playing games, I was using Windows XP. My first co-editor was Notepad++ and I found it awesome, but today I know how bad it was. I mean, the code was highlighted, but the code completion for PHP didn't really work that well. So whenever I made an error, I spent hours debugging it and asking people at IRC how to fix it. Side note, IRC is a vintage version of Discord and in my opinion is a better one. The whole learning experience was like a roller coaster of emotions rewarding and frustrating at the very same time. But why am I even telling you this? Most of the engineers today don't know the syntax of their programming languages because they never needed to learn it by heart. The situation got even worse when everybody started using AI. Cursor AI and ChatGPT made developers dumb. Whenever you ask a modern developer to write a program using a code editor without AI or code complete, they fail to implement a simple fizzbuzz. To make it even more ridiculous, usually those developers are the ones complaining about code interviews being disconnected from the reality. And don't get me wrong, it isn't an imposter syndrome if you don't know the syntax of your programming language. I mean, why do you even call yourself a programmer if you can't write code on your own? I'm a bit guilty here though. I was using AI to write code for a while and I really loved it. It made me so much faster, especially when I needed to learn a new programming language quickly. About a year ago, I needed to rewrite a small application in Golang, and I didn't have enough time to learn the language properly, so I used AI extensively. Whenever I had a problem, AI solved it for me, and it was so pleasant, so I didn't feel any frustration from learning, until recently. I wanted to try out a new code editor called NeoVim, but I didn't want to spend ages on setting it up, so I used a very bare version of it. Obviously, I did it in the lazy way, so I didn't even install LSP for Golang, and oh boy, I quickly realized that I don't even know how to write a simple for loop. That was the moment when I knew that I need to stop using AI and start to write code on my own. I stopped using AI in my editor because my skills were deteriorating too quickly. I know that you might feel like it isn't your problem, but whenever you are practicing for coding interviews, you always should use a different editor than your favorite one. Always disable LSP and any autocomplete and solve a bunch of lead code questions that require traversing arrays and hash maps. You need to be sure that you know the syntax of your programming language and you can code without AI. If you don't do this, you are doomed to wreck any job interview. Coding interviews are stressful and they drain the confidence. And that's why you need to be prepared to code in an unfriendly environment, like writing code on the whiteboard or writing code in an editor without code complete. It isn't as hard as it sounds, but you need to practice. Italian says that Rome wasn't built in a day, and that's the best way to look at your career as a software engineer. Influencers will be shouting at you that you must take shortcuts and use AI, otherwise you will fall behind. But you know what? 
internet is full of bad advice, and that's why you should watch this video next to find out what is the worst career advice given to software engineers.